Hello, 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 hello. Um, Nintendo X here, back again, uh, with another vlog, I guess you could say. Uh, now on Team Coast, that's exciting. Uh, I know a lot of you didn't know what to expect, but the big announcement I was hyping up on Twitter, and that's whatever, but it's Team Coast, uh, we're gonna have Elements on board as our coach, uh, just the same five plus members from GGU. Of course, Shifter's now back, really excited. And we're going to be moving to the gaming house soon. This might actually be the last vlog I do. It's only my second vlog I've ever really done, but it might be the last one I do before I actually move into the gaming house in, uh, in, in Los Angeles. So that's exciting. Uh, my topic I wanted to hit today was Olaf. Uh, you may know me, big Olaf player. I love Olaf. He was nerfed recently. I guess not really recently. It's been weeks now. Um, but he took a huge hit. Um... If you remember, there is the Undertow nerf, which was the nerf that made it so inside the hard slow, it scaled up from like 16 to 40 percent or whatever. It now fades over the duration of two and a half seconds, which kind of sucks. I want to talk about that first. All right, the Undertow slow nerf. A lot of people are like, "Oh, that's not no big of a deal." You know, Undertow is still gonna do shit tons of damage. Which, that's great. You can still do a lot of damage with your Undertow. It's a very strong spell, but the follow up on it is just difficult. Uh, you know, Olaf's not a champion that has gap closers, and you almost need to run Ghost on him as well. So, his innate chasing is not that special. His, uh, what he has differently, and this is where, like, he's really different from other tanky, kind of get to the back line champions. He doesn't have a gap closer. He has an ability that prevents, um, any CC from stopping him from using his abilities, uh, and running at you. So that's, that's the only leg up he has. And for that, nerfing him, he's one of those really difficult, difficult, touchy champions. If you nerf, he can just be way, way, way out of the meta. He'll just be terrible. Uh, and that's where kind of where he's at right now. He's in a really rough spot where he went from being very popular mid, or oh God, top lane, popular top lane, uh, somewhat popular in the jungle. I, myself, attest by that. Very good jungler. Um, to really, he doesn't have a place. Uh, you can... Like, he was always a pretty good 1v2-er, because he had his undertoes. Um, he's still probably a pretty good 1v2 champion. He's still probably pretty good in lane. Um, but the follow-up and hunting people down, it's just not there. Uh, and you can always blame that on, well, there's new champions that do better stuff, like Zach can fly himself 2,000 yards or whatever. That's not that's not the big deal here. The big deal uh, for me is the undertow nerf. Uh, first and foremost, the slow fading over time is just bad. Uh, good examples of abilities that fade over time with their slow are Wall of Pain and Tempest. I'm actually going to Google those right now. Wall of Pain, Carthus. And I want to take a look at the slow on it and how long it fades over. Um, Wall of Pain, okay. Slow is 40, scaling up to 80%. Very strong spell. Uh, obviously it doesn't do damage like Undertow. You can't follow it up with multiple, multiple Undertows, like Wall of Pains. Like, you can't run up, pick up your Wall of Pain and throw it again. That'd be pretty cool. But it reduces a hard amount over five seconds. That's the fade time on it. Uh, which is a very, very good... You still feel really the hard amount of the slow over five seconds, because you're still going to feel that 80% for a good half second. It's going to slow the hell out of you. You know, you've all played against Karth. It's, it sucks. It hurts. Uh, I'm going to search Lee Sin Tempest. I really should have like, looked these up beforehand. Uh, it's actually a cripple. But this slow, it's 20 scale up to 60% again. Um, a little bit stronger than Undertow. This scales over 4 seconds. Um, so yeah, you got 4 and 5 seconds there on Tempest. And you got the other one, Wall of Pain. Uh, it's pretty high, pretty high slows, actually. Um, you got Undertow, which scales from 24% up to 40%. That's 4% for level, you do the math. Uh, and it decays over 2.5 seconds. Um, again, the, I guess Riot's reasoning behind it was, well, you're going to pick it up in 2.5 seconds anyway and throw it again. So it's not that big of a deal. But the thing is, it's a huge deal. Because they're not feeling that 40% for more than like a quarter of a second. That's like fading, and before you know it, you're back up to full speed again. Because within, um, let's call it one and a half seconds, you're only slowed by 20% at max rank. 20% slow, that's that's pretty minimal. That's not very strong. You're not going to feel that at all. So you're really missing out on, like, 
like a second and a half, in my opinion, of hard CC that you used to feel from Undertale with that slow. And it was deadly. It had multiple targets. It was really strong. It was a great uh, chasing tool, even a decent initiation tool at some points. Uh, so the missile speed, still the same. All that's still the same. Also, all they did was they changed it to slow over time. Um, but the problem, obviously, it slows over two and a half seconds. That's much shorter than the fade time you have for the other abilities with the fade over time uh, slows. And even slows for less. Um, the only leg up it has is you can pick it back up. Uh, it reduces the cooldown. It starts cooldown starts at eight seconds. You can get that, that down to like five or something with forty percent CDR, and then four and a half seconds off when you pick it up. Um, so really, the downtime is really all it has over any of these abilities. Is you can keep spamming it and spamming it and spamming it. But this hurts a lot for if you're a jungler and you're ganking, because a lot of the time you're gonna be running in from the side. You're going to be tossing your undertow. You're going to be expecting to hit that, and you're going to keep following it up. But by the time you go up to pick your undertow, they're already, they could be 50 to 100 uh, units further than they were. And that's very important, especially as a jungler who has no gap closer, who you, runs ghosts, really. You don't really see him run any flash or less against, unless you maybe have to deal with like Jarvan or Nivea, something that can wall you in. So, really, it's hurting his ganking power a lot. And that ganking power turns into reflecting the chase power in team fights, so that's huge for him. He so that makes him even more kiteable, really, um, which hurts. But it's whatever. Let's move on to the vicious strikes nerf. That that nerf just like it's probably the more annoying nerf, but the probably the least felt one. The cooldown I believe went from twelve to sixteen seconds. Uh, this nerf was probably a little more needed than the other ones because it gave him you know. For six seconds, he got life steal, spell vamp, attack damage, which is a very good sustainable stat, and a stat that a lot of other champions have for, say, the top lane of the jungle. You know, you got Nocturne with his Umber Blades, you have Aurelia with his uh, hit, hit 10 style or whatever. So it's just another sustain spell that probably did need a touch up. That's completely fine with. The other point I want to make is Ragnarok. Uh, they didn't nerf the active at all, they just took the uh, passive from it, the armor pen you used to get. And they put that into the active. And, you know, it's another nerf that, like, oh, that doesn't look like much. But it's basically you're only reaping these armor pen benefits for six seconds. Um, that's not a big period of time when the cooldown's uh, 100 seconds, uh, pretty much with, without CDR. But, of course, you can build CDR on Olaf. Because you like CDR on Olaf. Because you like uh, reckless swinging people every two seconds. But still... Um, you only get six seconds of armor pen, and chances are, in your Ragnarok, when you blow that, you're probably not quite going to even be on somebody at that point. You usually do that to block the first wave of CC as you're ghosting in. Uh, let's say you're ghosting in, uh, you're chasing a Caitlyn. Like, I love chasing Caitlyn, this is uh, Olaf, it's so easy. Um, you're ghosting a Caitlyn, alright, then a Zyra just tosses her strangling roots, and then once those roots are about to hit you, you Ragnarok. That's like, yeah, but you're still running at Caitlyn, because she eat away. And then she flash away, so you have to run for another second, and then you throw your undertow. And then before you know it, the spell's down, and you're still trying to battle Caitlyn, and pfft, you die. So, really, you might only reap a couple seconds or a couple autos of that armor pen. That's really rough. It's not enough to feel like. If it was like six seconds of a giant-ass amount of armor pen, you'd probably feel it. But no, this is an amount that used to be on a passive. That's how, that's how, um, kind. I don't want to say weak, but how how basic it was, how general the number was. And you see uh, numbers like this on like Jace. You know, it gives passive armor and magic resistance when you're in his R form, which they took off of Nidalee and uh, Elise, which Jace will probably see next, to be honest. But that's beside the point. And it's just one of those numbers that like it's it doesn't make sense on the active because it's kind of weak and doesn't flow with the rest. Like it kind of it was it's, it was cool that that stats there that there's that stat for the armor pen, but if it's on the active, there's really no need for it. That you there should it shouldn't be there. It if Riot doesn't want to uh, give him a passive stat by leveling up Ragnarok, which I mean that was kind of one of the incentives to leveling it up still was oh I get that bonus ten armor pen per level that's pretty cool because other than that the stats don't really change if I recall. Uh, you have that for the constant six seconds. The mana cost goes down a little bit. The cooldown is going to go down. So really, all you're really benefiting from leveling up your ultimate is six more seconds of 15 armor and magic resist. 
and six more seconds of um, ten more armor pen. Like, what? Like those stats are so. It should feel more, right? Like in my opinion, it should. It's an ultimate. Uh, it, it the fact that it gets like this giant amount of power at six, and then from there it kind of trickles off. Like that doesn't feel right to me. So, I don't. I don't agree with the whole the armor pen on the active change. I think that's really silly. Um, so what I'd propose, I don't want to say to fix Olaf, but uh, he needs some changes at this point. Like He's always been kind of tricky to fit in competitive play, because he's been out for three years now. Like, three entire years this champion's been released. I saw Freak Spotlight from it from, like, 2010. Freaking hilarious. Like, the funniest thing I've ever seen, because it's so funny. He's run, like, a bot lane with Blitzcrank. It's just, it's whatever. But, um, first and foremost, I think Undertow, it needs to get its full slow back. And the reason for that is because it's really his only chasing tool, because you're going to have to run Ghost, and, like, everything else is pretty much preventative. Like, your Ragnarok, it's preventative. It prevents other CCs from stopping you. So all you have is really your Undertow, in terms of, like, chasing somebody down. Because, you know, you got your auto attacks with Vicious, vicious Strikes and Reckless Swing, that's cool. Um... I suggest that they give him that the slow back, or they make the slow fade over a longer duration. If Undertow faded over three and a half or maybe even four seconds, I think he'd really feel it more. And I think that's it's only fair that it would. Um, it might be a little too strong, though. I, I don't know how to really run the numbers, but I think it needs to fade. If they're dead set on it fading over duration, it's be over a longer time than two and a half seconds. Because right now it's pretty... It's... As I pointed out earlier, it's a low time, in my opinion, for a, a slow of that nature. Um, secondly, I propose you just take the armor pen off of uh, Ragnarok, take it off the active, and give him another active um, for the ultimate. Like, for example, food for thought, back, I don't know how long you guys have, been, have known Olaf, but back his old uh, active was, it gave him reduced damage, like, per per, like, uh, what's the, per source of damage, it would reduce it by, like, 10 or 15 or whatever. And that one, I thought it was extremely, extremely cool and clutch for stopping, like, ignite damage. Because it would cut down ignite damage by, like, 15 per tick, and you'd only feel, like, half the ignite. It was actually a really, really cool counter to it, I'm kind of sad it's gone. I would propose that you give it, give, uh, Olaf back the, uh, reduced damage per source of damage. It would allow burst damage to still hurt him, which burst damage always has, but it would cut down on, like, random stupid sources of damage all hitting him and him taking crap tons of damage. Um, that would cause his ultimate to be kind of a completely defensive fighting mechanism, which I think is what he needs. It needs to be completely defensive uh, in terms of blocking CC, giving him armor, like everything he needs all in one. Like That's very nice. A character like Trundle has that. Of course he doesn't have the reduced CC, but he gets his health, he gets his armor, he gets healing, um, and he saps armor and MR and he gets it to himself. And that's that's all it takes to have to eat for that champion. I think that should be a similar how Ragnarok should work. Um, to reciprocate that, you might need to nerf Reckless Swing. Uh, it's, I'm surprised it's like the only ability that didn't get touched in the last kit. The true damage has always been strong. Um, actually, I think they did nerf the cooldown on it, like a patch before or something to take a second off all levels, but um, I think it needs maybe a slight damage tune-up. Um, the cost is pretty fair. It costs a pretty fair amount of health. But I think it should maybe scale a little less hard. Like, right now it's 100 scaling up to 340, which is um, 60 damage scaling per uh, per level. I think it should scale down like maybe a little bit, like 55 per level. That would take a total of 20 damage off it on max rank. Just a tiny tweak, because I think you have to kind of tweak it a little bit to make sure Olaf's okay, because if you give these all the give him all these next benefits, he might be a little off the edge. Um, so that's kind of my opinion on how Olaf is right now. He's kind of stuck in an odd place in Season 3. Those are just, these have just been some of my thoughts on Olaf. And thanks for listening, been kind of ranting, but, you know, uh, yeah. I don't know how to end these at all. Holy crap. I just love ranting. See you guys. Thanks.